Hello everybody, I am Pranav and the topic of presentation is today is Cognitive Computing in Autonomous Vehicle. So this topic uh, has been inspired from the autonomous mode in Tesla. I have been seeing so many autonomous vehicle going around like Google car, Tesla, autonomous mode. So I, I wanted to understand what wisdom they are adding in their autonomous mode is cognitive computing is there which is part of our class so i try to drill down and try to find out first what is cognitive computing in terms of autonomous vehicle then then i will be like talking about a little bit of architecture of this av autonomous vehicle that i call okay and then the the important piece in this which actually is the decision making to make it more smarter there is a system which make it uh, intelligent system. So we'll we'll try to touch upon that. It's a, it's a vast field, but I will discuss uh, one example out of it. So these are the two reference. The first one is a paper written by Chinese authors, and that is a survey paper of approximately twenty papers uh, that happened in the recent cognitive computing field and another is an article from NIH regarding the intelligent system which is meant for decision making ISD. So all of the diagrams, figures, text, everything is coming from these references. So uh, the first thing out of cognit cognitive computing is cognition. I try to understand by going through the basics from the psychology the department. So acquisition of knowledge is uh, simply said as cognition. So what, what all things that include in that is pattern recognition, <coughs> attention, memory, <coughs> vision image, language, problem solving, decision making, all these things is acquisition of knowledge and these things are break up into two different parts some of them is called as high level cognition and some of them are called as low level cognition and the last point if you see which is how to bridge the low level perception with high level cognition and, and uh, how human intelligence form leads to different research topic that this is the going trend in the psychology so a uh, few of them like the third and the fourth point you see so these are the low level perception mm -hmm. and these are the high level perception and then this this will always keep coming in the picture as we'll go through the architecture and further so there is three kind of cognition that has been talked about uh, in terms of autonomous vehicle AV. So cognitism, connectedism and embroid connect, uh, cognition. So uh, uh, co cognitism is a theoretical framework to understand the mankind mind which seems to be tough but that is the, uh, the basic of psychology as it goes. And there is another uh, saying in psychology which is which i have mentioned here is cognitism being <coughs> that the symbol computing is the core of intelligence and that could come in for example we can see if we are able to recognize a symbol on traffic which says pedestrian crossing so that makes us intelligent however this has this is like too basic as per now but still if you come up with a new symbol and, you, and a, a system is able to recognize and able to make a decision on top of it, it could consider it as intelligent. So This is a really nice decomposition that you're providing here. And um, I just put, just for the first piece, I just want to add two comments. Um, the first one is probably the most important one, and that is that we would attribute this 
this notion, cognitivism uh, believes that symbol computing is a core of intelligence. You want to attribute that to Al Newell's paper, Physical Symbol Systems, in 1981. Um, and, the, and the idea is that cognition is the operation on mental symbols. So, for everything in the world, there's a symbol in the head, and we have cognitive operations that work on those symbols. And I, I, and I would say that idea um, you know, it was certainly you know, seminal at the time and still really dominates most of cognitive psychology, that there's a mental copy, a symbolic copy, and, we, and our cognition operates on that. And the good part about that for this group is that it's very easy to understand the link to computational systems, right? And of course, Al Newell has a reputation primarily in computer science and secondarily in, in psychology. So this, this first notion is, is um, really, really quite important. The second point that I want to make about this first notion, and it, and it threads through the other ones, is that um, cognitive psychologists tend to be primarily concerned with characterizing our thinking equipment, the architecture of our thinking equipment, rather than, and you won't like this part, rather than the programs that run on the thinking equipment, okay? So, you know, they're worried about you know, sort of like assembly language <laughs> type things, okay? Rather than the, the different kinds of programs that you can write, given that. So all the, these distinctions really here have to do with characterizing the cognitive architecture, <clears throat> the thinking equipment. And the idea is that if you characterize the thinking equipment, you have identified what's general. So my thinking equipment is just like your thinking equipment. And we can study mine, and I can make predictions about yours. It's much harder if you start trying to characterize my knowledge and use that characterization to predict your behavior. Why? Because our knowledge isn't the same, right? So the idea has been in psychology, try to identify the architecture. <clears throat> that's the thing that's general. That's the thing that allows us to predict by studying you know, one group of people how another group of people will behave. And that has really driven um, that sort of knowledge lean notion has driven, for example, the focus on perception, right? Because my eyeball is the same as your eyeball. If I understand how this eyeball works and the pathways that go back and project into the brain, it's gonna be the same for me as it is for you. Whereas if you start worrying about you know, my knowledge-based perception, then you don't have that sort of predictive capability. And that's really important to understand. Mainstream psychology is focused on the architecture. Now, I'm not a mainstream psychologist. I'm much more interested in the knowledge-based processing stuff, which is, you know, the foundation of the synergy between, between our groups. That characterizes the difference uh, or, the, or the, the, the primary thread in psychology is, is this focus on architecture, whether it's symbolic, connectionism, or embodied cognition. Those would be the three sort of pathways for conceptualizing the cognitive architecture. So, good job. Thank you. So, coming to the connectism, uh, we can take an example of neural network uh, and going to embodied co uh, cognition theory, which is more about uh, doing reaction as per your surrounding environment <clears throat> and all these three will keep coming back and forth in the the design and architecture of AV so 
going forward is another notion which is how do we make an intelligent system so uh, these are the four steps that has been mentioned thinking like a human acting like a human thinking reasonably and acting reasonably uh, my favorite is that last point but we will go through each of them one by one so uh, thinking like a human is considered to be a tough job it's bro broken down research is being done but still we need to know the inner working of a mind and next is acting like a human so another famous thing is here is the turing test which is uh, to find out the intelligence of a system do we know what the turing test is everybody here Everybody, can I pick somebody randomly and have me give it? Yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us what the Turing test is? So, Turing test <clears throat> is to uh, identify how intelligent is the system, and the moment human is not able to distinguish between an intelligent system and another human being, at that point of time, the the mentioned system is called as it has passed the Turing test. And so, we do know who Turing is. <laughs> So this is another point which goes into the laws of thought, which says like thinking the right way. Uh, this is one of, I mean, one of those four points, but this is my favorite point, which is acting reasonably. And this is what the AV is doing. It's operating automatically, percepting the environment, adapting the change in the environment creating and pursuing new goals i mean here the goals are written but the way we'll go forward we'll see it keeps changing its goals according to the environment and then make the best decision under the certain situation how is this different from turing equivalence so turing <coughs> equivalence is the system is intelligent mm -hmm. but what is supposed to do, it varies in under situation scenarios. One machine is meant for one job, it's it's too good over there, mm -hmm. but the same machine is not, uh, will perform as good as in a different scenario. Like a crawling robot will not do a, a best NLP job, probably. Okay. So this is more comprehensive? Uh, the, Acting reasonably is more comprehensive. This is this make more sense in context of autonomous vehicle. Mm. So this is the architecture of autonomous vehicle. Uh, too much of text. If this doesn't make sense, this is what is being broken, and a very important point. So one part is environment perception. Another point is driving decision. So this part <coughs> is uh, will be done with the help of sensors that include cameras and everything, and our low level perceptions, and and that is as well as low level cognition, and this decision making part or the driving decision part that is navigation and decision making that comes as high level cognition. And, think about this division of responsibilities. Does that make sense to you? First you do the envi perceive the environment and then you make a decision. Do you like that? Any of you guys do anything, any, um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, building things, woodworking, plumbing, any experience with anything like that? Uh, on foot land navigation, rock climbing, white water rafting, any, any, nothing? You don't get out much. You've never done anything like that? Never? Are you serious? You're not serious. Yes, you are. 
Has anybody ha had any in, any sort of physical? Huh? <laughs> huh? What did you say? So you said <laughs> has anybody had any sort of? I completed the sentence one. Okay. I said no. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Okay, well, let's take, does everybody here, most everybody here walks, I believe. <laughs> does, does it feel to you like there's this, first I perceive, then I, then I make a decision about where to put my foot? Does it feel that way to you? No? It feels a little odd to, to make this partition. And there are certainly some psychologists, and John would be one of them, who was here, remember, at the very beginning of the, of the, of the summer, um, who would say, this, this cleavage of perception and cognition is possibly, possibly misleading. And it's just interesting that, that, that it's been built into at least some of the autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. because there would be there would be people who would who would raise their eyebrows and say, mm, that doesn't feel quite right to me that we would that we would think about it that way. I would say this is a loop and we'll come to a starting point and it will go keep on going forward and backward. <clears throat> like you make a decision, you go for it, you perceive your environment. If required, you change your goals, come back to that, make a new decision, and keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that is how it will be broken further. Okay, so here I will quickly discuss about the perception module, which is this part of it, like mm -hmm. short memory, obstacle detection, localization, mapping, and another modules like traffic light detection, and traffic sign detection, and uh, recognition this is what i was talking at the very first time the symbol recognition mm -hmm. so all of these are coming back uh, yeah so far short memory system is as same as putting a memory over there like cpu or something to compute things but obstacle detection and localization as mapping is two interesting thing which is terms as sensors the first one uh, could be done with the help of cameras and lasers. So camera, and then there's a point that comes as active sensor and passive sensors. Cameras visual will be treated as passive sensors. However, laser will be treated as active sensors. So there is uh, a, lo a lo loss of information in both terms, but there is another cost one you get pretty fast, another will take, cost you time to get a, uh, in, uh, output from it. So uh, that is another field that goes into computer vision and everything. So I will just stop there. Another is localization and mapping, which, which is indicated by this figure, but we can more easily understand it with the help <coughs> of the GPS. So to, to find out where we stand in a global map, is more like a localization and from there we make a goal okay I'm standing at noises and now I wanted to go to my home and that's how it goes okay so, so wait, wait back up so how, how's the GPS gonna help me out with this okay so GPS is if I make a decision that I have to go home mm -hmm. and my home is five miles apart mm -hmm. so I need to know where I stand first Mm -hmm. So that is the localization part of it. Okay. And how so, about the obstacle detection versus hills? Oh. Okay. This figure is meant for localization and mapping. Okay. And this figure is meant for obstacle detection. Okay. So uh, there are two different examples. How do we uh, do these two different functions? Okay. So. So th this is where like. In perceiving the environment is the two example has came out from there. Mm -hmm.
obstacle detection. And okay, the two different functions. All right. Mm -hmm. And the GPS is going to help me with localization? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, I have missed one point over here. So, this paper have been inspired from a challenge that, that has been conducted by DARPA. Mm -hmm. And that is an urban challenge, I presume, happened in 2007 or 2005. And the the winner or the best team that has uh, participated in the event, their result have been surveyed and try to find out what technology they have used. And the slides that have already present, these are the common abstract from all the team that has participated. So <coughs> now we I'm directly going to the part which says navigation and decision making. And the left side of the screen, you whatever you see, is the name of the team like Boss, and this is what their techniques were. And so similarly, there were these were the three teams: Talco, Junior, and Boss. Wait, where are they? Where are they? Oh, it's over here. Oh, but okay, okay. So they participated in the challenge, and then their techniques have been surveyed with the help of all the literature that is written recently on cognition computing. Mm -hmm. So, and then I have put the figure that we uh, seen earlier, mm -hmm. and this is the one which is uh, more, uh, we can say a little bit diluted form of this main one, which is, which so shows us the loop. the loop. We are perceiving the environment. We are, I mean, vehicle is posing the road information vehicles, mission, navigation, and decision-making, then the motion, and again it goes back to the environment perception. And if we uh, find out how the missions are planned, like the term R and DF is road network uh, data files. So from, and this comes from GPS, it takes information, it makes a plan, it find out different paths, which path is required, I mean, uh, path it has from point A to point B, which cost it better, which cost uh, less, it detect the blockage. So finally it come out with a path, okay, this is where I wanted to traverse. Can you tell me about that evaluation function, that generating paths with different costs, what does that mean? Okay, so. Like fuel cost or travel time or what? What, what am I, how am I evaluating my past? Uh, I need to get into the paper to come out with a number of costs that is, okay. but I would say time costs or on an average, how much uh, one takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. a lot of blockage is there. Mm -hmm. It's not at all useful for me to traverse through that path instead if I have a shortcut, probably mm -hmm. I'll go ahead with that. So Because I would, I would suggest that the intelligence and the similarity of that evaluation function mm -hmm. to a human's evaluation function totally. is a key part of what would make this mm -hmm. intelligent. Totally, I totally agree with that. Uh, the mo reason I didn't go behind this cost mm -hmm. was I was more indulgent to from a motion mm -hmm. How do you perceive the environment? <clears throat> because perceiving environment is more like like human than than machine. Just reading some number and taking a decision or a rule based system is not that way. So we'll come back to something called as uh, emotion and need. Like for example, if you can see at what point of time driving a car you feel like you should press the gas more, go on high speed. And this is coming from a human inside a human. This is not coming from uh, the the like how how fast you are going, the how fast you are going attribute to that part, but the decision is being taken by a human, and we'll cover that part later on. So similarly, you see another team and their mission and how how do they do their stuff, and the other team. So, so from here, the most important point is they make their decision with perceiving environment, but now how do we, they make their decision? That is a more uh, interesting question as for now. So 
uh, and this is so here i will go into the next article from nih to find out how do they make decision which is more of a computing part than uh, the cognition part but uh, this is the survey from the result which says uh, still 80 percent information obtained by human driver and their mission and there's no not much work that has done on vehicles cognition level and everything uh, so this is the last part which is intelligent system of decision making so how do we are making those decisions we are taking the input perceiving environment so it's it's more like we are taking input as position velocity acceleration and how do we need <coughs> this value to make a call should i go hard on my gas or i should stop the few system that is do you that, think that's what do you are you are you committed to those dimensions uh, of of interacting with the environment? Uh, this is this is one example that has discussed in this article. Mm -hmm. So I'm going uh, uh, along with that. There may be certain more uh, uh, measures that we can take in take mm -hmm. consideration into. But as per now, th these are those examples. Okay, so to the extent that we're worried about mimicking a human, which we may not need to do. I mean, we've talked before that maybe, you know, complimenting the human is a thing to do. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that we're mimicking humans, um, you worry about um, something called opt optical flow, mm -hmm. um, which is it's not really a measure of, of uh, speed per se, but the rate of change mm -hmm. across your peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So um, have you ever noticed when you're in an SUV, you go faster than when you're, well, it depends, in a, in a regular car, let's not say a sports car. Have you ever noticed that? That's mm -hmm. because you're trying to equate that optical flow, that rate of change across your field of vision. Mm -hmm. And you're up so high that you know, you're tempted to go, go faster. I, 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 I do that all the time. There is an uh, example that has been talked about in this article. About that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I have covered it or not, okay. but I have read it. Uh -huh. So maybe. Uh, so here are a few systems like fuzzy network, neural network, and rule based methods, which is taken help. And I was particularly intrigued by the fuzzy system when Amir and Hussein were discussing that in the class. So I go behind that and try to find out in a real time scenario how does that work. So, uh, this is an abstraction layer and more or less you see if, if this, this piece has been broken down from this uh, architecture. So, here you say, see your uh, environment, car state, sensors, then you perceive it, then uh, uh, here is something which is traffic rule, but it's more like uh, estimating the next event and then your how do you react to it and then whatever decision that you make goes into the physical environment and that's again go as a feedback. So this figure will be around for a while the, and it will be keep changing as we go further a bit by bit. Mm -hmm. So here is something, uh, okay, this more or less say the same thing, but uh, this there is a change where we see a traffic rule interpreter that has became as a estimation of state of object. So the way uh, Dr. Shalim was talking about, if you're going too fast, your optical vision is going too fast, you feel like you're you're going slow and you need to go fast and that's what th that has been covered here the estimation of your state object so it's more like you're going uh, you you're going fast and you're not able to estimate how close the another vehicle could be if if they press their brakes and uh, this analysis could be done by human and 
which will be almost equal as this estimation and there could be the system the intelligence system will come in their place and they will make a call which is actually deployed in nowadays in most of the uh, most of the luxury variant of the vehicle and here uh, this there is another concept that has been introduced here is need represented by edge and emotional content like at some point of time you are going too slow or you feel like you are going too slow and all of a sudden you you feel a urge of pressing your gas gas going pretty fast and these are these are the measure that has not that will not come up directly with a value to you i mean we don't have a system that will give you uh, some floating point numbers to that here we build a system with the help of fuzzy logic <coughs> which, where we will try to find out with a value which we say influence value how much they influence to our decision so oh yeah this is a continuation of that same system where they will be keep discussing the need and emotion and this is the interesting point out of it which is uh, note that this model is a derivative of cognitive psychology adapting for the purpose of autonomous driver it simply mimic the way in which driver need to react to a certain <coughs> stimulus so why, why are we saying that this whole system is meant for autonomous vehicle yeah this is i know but why do we say it's why it's why is this adapted from cognitive psychology why, why are we thinking that uh, because it's trying to mimic the human driver the point that we discussed earlier yeah. it's trying to uh, behave in the same uh, uh, show the same behavior as human do when they see traffic rules they probably stop mm -hmm. and if they see there is no cop around probably they go uh, <laughs> ahead of the limit something like that so the result of this uh, article will show how a human driver was driving with respect to the output from this autonomous system how how close they are so this is another uh, system the fuzzy logic which is actually giving out a value which we call as influence value and uh, it, it accounts the need and emotion so there are few uh, concept that is talked about here which is like there is three kind of state like when you are satisfied you probably go ahead with whatever you have like you are driving on 30 and you are driving on 30 you're satisfied with that then there is an alarm state probably you are going on 90 and you see uh, a vehicle in front of you has pressed the brake and the the alarm is the state where you're almost breaking into the vehicle ahead of you and uh, over here this part is the satisfaction part which is going down and at the same time this is growing as is this uh, speed on the uh, x axis what's on the x axis so the x axis is uh, the unfulfillment degree oh, meter so that's the isn't that the y axis no meter is this one okay and mu of meter is this one okay so this this shows like how satisfied you were then you have grown up into a pre alarm state and finally you are into alarm state and this blue dash is is that influence one which is here it's a weighing function which denote like how your decision is going to be influenced between this scenario from your satisfied to alarm and this is just for this is but this is a decision for example about speed is that is that the the, the, yes. the idea when we wow. take an account need and emotion into our you system. You guys just love this emotion stuff. You do. You're just enthralled with it. 
most psycho okay, not most, 80%, many psychologists don't deal with emotion. And look, wouldn't you say that's true? Mm -hmm. They really don't. Are you shocked? We really don't care. I really, I really don't care how you feel. Um, it's a very small, this emotion and motivation stuff is a very small slice of psychology and not well integrated with cognitive psychology. <coughs> that's, a, that's a common complaint. Uh, and so what I'm seeing here is an attempt to integrate the emotion with the decision making. I would say the one exception to that might be your last uh, um, framework, the embodied cognition framework, mm -hmm. probably does a rather better job um, mm -hmm. integrating mm -hmm. an emotion with decision making. But in general, you don't really do that. So this is, there is another concept that is Maslow Pyramid. <sighs> okay, you're making me hyper and like. And uh, this is where you see like different level means what what it, it is there. So uh, at psychological level, it's more like you're optimizing your energy. Physiological. Your yeah. uh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And th that's how uh, it increased. Like the the at most you are too creative. Probably you are trying to pass every vehicle that you are encountering. Something like that. So this need is uh, has been influenced by this pyramid when we have been uh, we compare uh, going forward. So I'll I'll reach way way back to when I took psych intro psych because that's about the depth of my knowledge. Claire might have more because she teaches this kind of stuff. But the general idea behind Maslow's hierarchy <coughs> is that. You first take care of the most urgent stuff. So you take care of the physiological, right? If you can't breathe or you know you can't move or whatever, that's really important. Then then there's safety. You know, don't don't do anything that, that risks you. Then you worry about, you know, I don't know, getting to your destination on time because you're meeting a friend and you want to mm -hmm. Make sure you know. Make sure that you're respectful, or some something like this. I'm really out of my depth here. Um, and then, and then there's you know self-esteem, like like how great a driver are you, for example. Um, and then there's you know self-actualization and creativity, like you know like mm -hmm. can I find some new exciting way to drive this car, or or you know new mm -hmm. interesting route, or something like that. But the basic idea is that is that this hierarchy. Um, um, organizes your drives and you take care of the bottom layer of the pyramid first. Is that good enough? Is there anything yeah. else to this thing? No, I, I've never heard it be applied to like a certain thing. It's usually like your whole life. Yeah, but yeah. But it, that, so you're in terms of you know how you would prioritize your, your tasks going through the day, first you're going to worry about the physiological. <coughs> And you know, making sure that you have food and whatever, and then you know, and then your physical safety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, this is where the actual computing come into picture. So we have again our same uh, figure, which was earlier, mm -hmm. and now the edge and uh, eta, like need and emotion, has taken place over here, and which is which is actually driving the whole uh, system. So how do you react that is much, pretty much based on what is your need and how what is your emotion that is going around. Like if you are on the low level, you don't need to have a high speed and you are okay with that. But if you are on like the creative level, probably you want to like go fastest as ever you can. And that that's goes as your reaction and this system has been converted into a neural network to find out the influence factor in decision making. And I'm coming to the results part of this. So this table is more like how, how do, uh, based on distance, what decision is required to be made. 
and this table which says what rules were there which which has changed your scenario or the perceiving of environment what type it was and how does it influence and not going into the uh, into the the tables uh, i just wanted to show you the results which here is this this black graph which is a continuous graph which is how a human will drive and these points which seems like a yellow point yeah it, it is looking yellow points mm -hmm. this is where um, your reaction has come place like at some point of time where you see there's a speed limit your reaction which is the last part of uh, mm -hmm. this framework has taken place and this red line is the speed limit the rule according to the rule based system traffic rules mm -hmm. so uh, if we see closely the way human drive and they the way autonomous vehicle is driving is almost near to mimicking the same whenever like in this scenario where the speed limit is low it's quite since driving too slowly for a long time very quickly it is having a urge of increasing the speed all these yellow dots and it don't increase its speed according to to abide the rule system and when it it, it gets the its chance it does that so which one is the human and which one is the vehicle i'm, I'm confused <clears throat> no it's the vehicle but it's trying to say that this is what the a human, human would do mm -hmm. okay so i guess that was the end of my presentation questions you guys ready to sign up thank you you want to buy you buy, want to buy one Unless until it costs thirty thousand dollars to replace. Okay, but apart from the cost, do you want to buy one? Would you drive one if someone gave it to you? No. Okay, you tell me which part of this model you don't like. <coughs> don't don't tell me you don't like it because it doesn't, you know, work that thing. Which part? What what do you think it? What, what do you think is bad? What part of the model? The traffic signal uh, sensing and the decision making part. Okay, so you're worried that this that this doesn't take into account all of the contingencies yes. and special cases in an environment. Yes. Okay. Is that the only thing that worries us? Because I can fix that problem by solve, by putting in enough knowledge, right? Well, I'll just have a, I'm, I don't know where my knowledge model is, but there must be one somewhere here. No, it, here we have architecture, not the knowledge model. <clears throat> well, let's see. There must be a knowledge base somewhere. No knowledge base? Mostly these things uh, take their knowledge from sensors, which is like per perceiving the environment. Well, that's kind of peculiar. <laughs> what about that reaction database? Isn't that, isn't that my knowledge base? Maybe. So I'll fix that. I'll just put that reaction, I'll just have a a new thing in there for traffic cops and no lights and whatever. Done. Anything else? So during accident, like we cannot avoid that accident. How it would react with the traffic? I've seen this commercial on TV where this guy is talking to his daughter. Have you seen this commercial? He's talking mm -hmm. to his daughter about his daughter's boyfriend, <clears throat> and he's driving her to school, and he's distracted. Have you seen this? And the and the car. I mean, it doesn't. It's not in an accident. It prevents an accident. It pre because the car stops suddenly in front of him, and the idea is that it's actually better. 
No? I don't know, have you, have you guys ever been in a skid before, in a skid in the rain, and you're supposed to turn in the direction of the skid? I've never been in this situation personally, but I cannot imagine that I would actually react properly. I am sure I would screw it up. No? You think you're better? So nobody wants to buy one of these and nobody's telling you why, except it doesn't have enough knowledge and we don't, we're worried about what it's going to do in an accident. That's it? Those are the only problems? Well, I'll fix those. And then I'll be offering the cost to you. Probably that is that the autonomous vehicle will take out the joy of driving from human. That's a human experience. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose that. Ooh, it's really hard for me to come at that one. Yeah, I know. I'm presenting the topic. And <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to drive and this will take all the fun out. So there should be a mode that I decide. It should go autonomous or it should not. Probably I don't like the pods, the taxi pods, the people are working on that. Yeah. Self-driving <clears throat> pods, self-driving taxis. Because it's not fun. Can't, I, can't, I don't really have a retort for that one. I'll wait for it. Huh? I'll wait for that. Okay. And so how is this related to what we do? Do we care? What's the, what's the relationship to the kinds of issues that we're concerned about? Uh, I would say, like, at the level, how, how do I perceive the environment? If you can see K-Health, it's pretty much based on sensor. So that is one aspect, but I was trying to find so when I write logic for even my program, so what I'm expecting from suites uh, is I'm expecting them as for which I have written my logic. Probably no, they are just tweeting the emotions, they are just tweeting the, um, I would say, media entity. Mm -hmm. they, they stop writing the text. And I'm expecting te text since it's a tweet. Okay. Probably I have not mapped it. I have not perceived the environment correctly. I do like the point that this is relevant to um, applications where you're combining sensor data mm -hmm. and qualitative data. I think that is the same, mm -hmm. same kind of problem, and how, how you consider putting those together. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really good point. Any other relationship to stuff that we do that we're worried about? It's only logic. When you get, get into the computation part, mm -hmm. so, so there is something is which is not able to measure with the scientific ISO Precise. standards. Okay. And then you are computing that, okay. like the way we do sentiment analysis. Mm -hmm. We don't have a, like ISO standard for that. Still, we are measuring that <laughs> in one or the other okay. way. So, okay. something which is not being measured. Still, we develop a system which is actually giving a feedback, mm -hmm. irrelative of a number or a state or whatever it is. Okay. That is still considered as part of the system. So we believe that's okay. adding value. Hussein, where's Hussein? He's still here. What about the location piece? You happy with the way they conceptualize location? It's just, po it's, I think it just points in space, I think. So, regarding location, there is an interesting point that I have learned in my previous lecture, which was 
uh, the way we localize here is we think of the stuff in 2D or 3D event and the, the normal assumptions are there will be always a, a ground or let's assume there will be sea level so how high we are from sea level how far we are from sea level that will be the normal conception mm -hmm. but think of space so you don't have anything to compare with that so is this two is this 2d is that what you're telling me it's not really three, well it has to be 3d there has to be hills or no it doesn't know about hills so when you try to localize uh, yourself you need to have a standard with respect to you localize yourself uh -huh. but when it comes to space there is nothing that you can localize with so you need to come up with a new paradigm and that and what are they doing here They're... i would say the localization part since GPS has already provided those system. We don't get into that small nativity of it. We like already have the abstraction layer from there. Is it is is that adequate? Do you think that's adequate? I would say we are just reusing the system that is already built with a good precision. So we are not drilling deep into it. So we do we, we need any more? <coughs> I'm not getting that. On ours, we are we are good with that. The GPS are pretty good, but if we are going out of ex, on extraterrestrial, probably we need another system. Extraterrestrial? Well, you know, forget about that. I'm just talking about you know going up and down mountains and 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 things like that. Do these systems know about that? Do these systems know about their terrain, the nature of the terrain? Not your not your point in space. That's Fine, I get that. We know that. Do they know where they are in the same way that we know where we are? <coughs> I would say the localization part is not capturing the terrain, but for that they have another sensor called camera, which is trying to find the slope of the road or angle of the road. So they are complementing it with another sensor over there. Is that the span of your localization when you're driving? Does everybody here drive? Yeah. Okay. Is that the span of your localization when you when you drive? You just like you know, like how many feet ahead of you? What the slope is of the? Uh, it, I would say like if if it is too steep, and it's uh, snow is around everywhere, I would not like to like press too hard on the gas. Probably go slow as slow as possible. I suspect your conceptualization of the environment spans mm -hmm. well beyond. You know what's what's immediately visible. Yeah, totally. Agree. You know, if you're driving, anybody driven up Highway One in California before? Yeah. Hey, that's really scary. Or Glacier National Park, or something like that. You are definitely worried about the big picture and not mm -hmm. just the you know the immediate curve and the immediate uh, mm -hmm. angle. Okay, so we had the fuzzy logic, the localization, um, what other issues? The, the combination of sensors mm -hmm. and qualitative data. Um, those are the sort of the touch points with respect mm -hmm. to what we, what we worry about. That's good.